Okay, good morning, Murabi Rabotai. We are continuing on Mishnah Buram, Shukharu Horachaim, Yilchot Birkota Shachar. We started Siman Mem Zayin, discussing and studying Halachot of Birkata Torah. We mentioned that Birkata Torah is perhaps the Oraita, according to many Rishonim, the Ramban, Sefer Achinuch. <coughs> and that at least is for the men. And therefore, if a person has Safek, they have to. Um, Say the Birkata Torah again, at least the very last one, the, the Bracha Vashem Baharbanu, which is the best of the Bracha, the most important one. <clears throat> and the Mishnah Bura says that would suffice um, for a, a case, a scenario that the person has suffered. We mentioned that Chacham Badia says that for women, according to everyone, the Birkata Torah is the Rabbanan, and hence, if they have doubt, they could do without, they could say, um, no Birkata Torah if they think they may have said it before that day, and therefore would be Safek Brachot Lehakel. Says the Mishnah Rab Me'od, you have to be very careful. Shelon Lilmod A person has to be very mindful not to learn Torah until a person says Birkata Torah. Now, do you have to say Birkata Torah standing? The Chacham Badia Yosef writes that you don't have to be makpit to stand, um, and you could say it even sitting down. There are those others that are more mindful to stand when they say Birkata Torah, which again is a, is a topic that we have discussed before, Birkata Mitzvah, if they have to be said standing up or not. So the Chachila person could say them standing, but you don't have to, says Chacham Badia, you could say it sitting down as well, and the, uh, the fact that you can't learn Torah until you say the bracha, there are those who explain that in every mitzvah is asur to do the mitzvah without saying the bracha, and in Talmud Torah, the, again, in, in other mitzvot, it's not asur to do the mitzvah without, 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 without saying the bracha. If you didn't say birkat tefillin and you put on tefillin, that's not asur. But in Mitzvah Talmud Torah, is it actually sur to learn Torah without having said Birkota Torah? And the, the reason is because you are nehene from Achilah and Shtia, and it's a sur to, to, to eat and drink, to engage in benefiting from the world without saying the bracha, like Gemara says in Masechet Brachot. And here is equivalent of benefiting from the Torah without you have a hana'ah of learning Torah without saying bracha, that would be something that would be asu. We mentioned this before, that the igletal, the hakdamah of igletal, the sachich of the Rebbe, Rabbi Avraham, the of the son-in-law of the Katske Rebbe, he writes that pleasure from the Torah, having hana'ah from the Torah, is part and parcel of the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. And we mentioned before that you see that from also a Chidusher Rabbeinu Abraham in Hahar in Masechet Nedari. It was a fascinating thing. This used to be actually a big machloket, whether or not Torah Lishma, learning Torah Lishma could be done when you have pleasure from learning. Actually, my Roshiva Zatzal's great great grandfather, the first Solanim Rebbe, Rabbi Abraham Weinberger. Uh, this is Rabbi Weinberg, uh, Weinberg, Rabbi Weinberg's, uh, Rabbi Noach Weinberg, Rabbi Yaakov Weinberg's great great grandfather, first Lalim Rebbe, he writes in, in his Sefer, Lev Avraham, he says that um, if a person has pleasure from learning, that's a chisaron of the Ishma. It's not considered Torah Ishma if you have Gishmak from learning. The Sachich of Rav, the Igletar, disagrees very vehemently. He says, What are you talking about? This is part of the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. To be happy to have gishmak is part of the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. And I found a, a powerful raya for this from the Chidushim of Rabbeinu Abraham in Ahar in Masechet Nedarim. Now, the Igletal brings raya from a, a Gemara in Masechet Keretot, Tafyutet. There the Mara says, Hamit asek b'chalavim u'ba'arayot chayav sheken nehenet. Usually, when you're mitasek, you're completely patu. Mitasek is even less than shogeg. Shogeg is you turn on the switch on Shabbat because you don't remember that it was Shabbat, or you don't remember that this is asur, that's shogeg. But you're aware of what you're doing. Mitasek means you're passing by and your body 
touches the light and it goes on. That's even much, much less than shogeg. You're patur, completely patur. But <clears throat> the the, the Mishan Keretot says that you're chayav if it's be'arayot and chalavim because you have hana'a and the hana'a is part and parcel of, of the, so the Igletal says, Talmud Torah also, the gishmak of learning is part and parcel of it. Therefore, you have to, um, you have to be mindful of, um, of the fact that having pleasure in learning is not a chisaron of lishma. Now, I found perhaps a stronger raya from one of the Rishonim. He says, Rabbeinu Avraham bin Ahar and the Gemara in Masachet Nedarim, this Gemara says, if, you, if a person made a nether not to benefit from a certain individual. Imagine if Reuben made a nether that he's not going to benefit at all from Shimon. Made a nether. Now Shimon paid $100 towards a Sefer Torah drive of the community. Now they bought the Sefer Torah. Says the Gemara, Reuben is asur to use the public Sefer Torah that Shimon paid some money for towards it because part of that is Shimon's and therefore you're nana from Shimon. It's asur. So Frecht, Rabbeinu Abraham Minahar, Rabbeinu Abraham Minahar asks a question, he says, wait a second. We have a klal in Shas called mitzvot. Lav lehanot nitu. Mitzvot are not given for hana'ah. So how, how, do you, how do you deal with this? This should not be considered a halachic hana'ah. Says Rabbeinu Abraham Minahar, that's by other mitzvot. But a mitzvah that the hana'ah is part and parcel of the mitzvah itself, we don't say mitzvot lav lehanot nitu. Therefore, Torah, the learning, the hana'ah you have, gishmak you have from learning, is part and parcel of the mitzvah, is considered that you're having hana'ah from the assets of Shimon, and therefore it would be asur. So this is also part of why it's asur to say, um, to, to learn, to say anything in learning, to engage in learning be, before saying birkat, uh, birkat Torah. So, Says the Mishnah Berurah. He brings the Gemara in the pasuk in Yirmiyah and the Gemara in, in the Darim that we mentioned. You have to say. He says, "Ve'ivarech ota be'simcha gedolai." You should say it with a tremendous simcha. The Matzinu Shamru Chazal. The Gemara says in the Darim Pe Aleph. Same Gemara is reading Baba Metziada Pe He as well. Al Ma Avda Haaris. Why was the Beit Hamikdash destroyed? Because they left my Torah. The Gemara explains there, they asked this question to Nevi'im. They didn't know because Jews were learning Torah. Nobody knew why Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, says the Chafetz Chaim, and says the, says the Gemara there, Hashem knew the reason was even though that they were learning Torah, they were not learning properly. They were learning, engaging in learning Torah, just like physics, chemistry, mathematics, other chokhmot. Therefore, Torah was not magen on them, did not protect them. You have to give a thanks to Kadosh Baruch Hu whenever you say Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Amin. When I tell you what Torah means, what are you saying? Hashem, you've chosen us. This is what makes us Halik. This is what makes us Kodesh. This is what makes us Am Kadosh, a holy nation. Mamlechet Kohanim. When I tell you what Hashem has given us, given us the best thing that He has, and that's Torah. A person would not merit to have a son, sons that are tamide hachamim, if he does not have um, simha in birkata Torah. If you're not careful in saying birkata Torah, you won't merit having children who are tamide hachamim, says the Gemara. So this is, again, something very important. And the Maharit explains the Gemara. Maharit was the Chazunish held that Maharit was one of the greatest, if not the greatest of the Achronim, tremendous, tremendous level of, 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 of Gadlut in Torah. He writes, he explains the Gemara, where it means, Shalom Baruch Hu Torah that they didn't say Bracha, Birkat Torah. That means they did not say the first Birkat Torah. What did they do? 
they did Birkat Avat Olam. They davened and they said Birkat Avat Olam. That's how they were Yotze Birkat Torah. They're very lumdish. They, they said they're Yotze Birkat Torah, but they did it Birkat Avat Olam. And that's how they, 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 they were punished because they were not desiring the beauty of Torah. They were not happy with, 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 with the Chokhmah of Torah in the way that it should be. So it says, the, there's, there's a lot to talk about this. Again, the time is not going to allow, but the next Sif in Shukharuch says, Sif Bet, Sarich Rabarech Ben Demikra Ben Demishna Ben we have the, we, we had, we have had this Machloket in the Gemara, Masachet Barachot, a few Aleph, Machlok um, Amoraim, do you say for Midrashim, do you not say for Midrashim, for Gemara, for Mishnah, and so on. And the Maskana of the, the Rishonim is that you have to say Bracha, whether you're learning Sukim or Mishnah or Gemara. And Rema adds Ben the Midrash, even for Midrash as well, to which the Mishnah Bura writes Ben the Midrash. It's not that. Maran is passing like that, that they are in the Gemara, the Midrash doesn't need Birkada Torah. Maran also agrees that Midrash needs Birkada Torah. He holds, Maran Bet Yosef holds, that Midrash is included in the Psukim, because that is part and parcel of learning Psukim is Midrash, Midrash Halakha, Midrash um, Agada on Psukim. Now, how about Zohar and Sifre Kabbalah? So Kavachayim writes, that's Pashut that you need to say because of Torah, because these are the core elements of Torah, says the Kavachayim. The, the secrets of Torah are the deepest levels of Torah. So says Kavachayim, even though that's not mentioned in the Gemara, it's not mentioned in the Rishonim, and it's not mentioned in Shukharuch, but nevertheless, it's Pashut that for learning Zohar and, and Kabbalah also, you need to say Birkada Torah. And um, Kavachayim also mentions that Maran, who does not bring the Midrash, is because it is part of Gemara. So he says not, it's not part of Mikra, but it's part of Gemara. Gemara is the, the Perush of the Mishnayot and Perush of the Psukim as well. And when the Gemara goes on darshaning the Agatas or simple understanding of Psukim, that is part and parcel of Gemara as well. So it's not, Midrash, Midrash is not, Part of Sukim, but it's part of Gemara, says the Kafachai. So here, Maran says in Sif Gimel, How about if you're writing the Torah? You're not saying it. You're not listening to Torah. You're writing, you're quietly sitting there. No one knows if you're writing a, a letter or you're writing Hidushet Torah. You have to say Mikada Torah for writing Torah or not. Says Maran Shukharuch, Hakotev Divrei Torah, Far Pishe Eno Kore. Even though that you're not lipping it, you're not mentioning it, you're not saying it, Sarich Levarech. You must still say Birkata Torah, and this is from the Abu Dram, the Bet Yosef brings from Rabbi David Abu Dram that this is the Alacha. It's actually very interesting. The Ramban writes Al Fumash. This is just an off, um, uh, you know, source that I, I haven't seen anyone bring this, but the Ramban Al Fumash writes. And then Yitro sends a, uh, a message to, to Moshe Rabbeinu that he's coming. He says, Vayomer Yitro, right? He says, Vayomer Yitro. He told Moshe Rabbeinu, right? I am Chotencha Yitro Ba'elecha. I am your father-in-law coming to you, uh, you know, and your wife and your two children are also are with you. So says the Ramban, goes back and forth and says, how did he say it to him? And he, he suggests several different suggestions. He shoots every one of them down. And he writes at the end, he says, this is a letter that he wrote to him. He sent a letter to Moshe Rabbeinu saying that he's coming to visit him. And says, says, says the Ramban, that's considered by Yomer. Saying it in a letter is considered by Yomer. So I'm not sure how halakhically you could, you could darshan this. Is Ramban at the end of the day is one of the Rishonim. Yeah, but not that the messenger told him. Messenger just delivered a letter. And that the pasu caused by Yomer, saying. So I'm not sure how halakhically in the Torah you could, you could, you could, you could uh, apply the Ramban. That's a cute maramakom. It's, it's an interesting maramakom that in the language of Torah, according to Ramban, writing is called Amira. So here, writing the Abu Dram writes, you need to say Rikata Torah as well. Again, 
The Bilagaon, of course, is known that for machshava even, if you're thinking hirhur in different Torah, you need to say Birkat Torah. And of course, writing, uh, usually for most of us, you, you don't write different Torah, hopefully, when your mind is shut down and you're not being meharher in different Torah. So, of course, according to him, you would have to say Birkat Torah. Says the Mishtabura, Hakotev Hirhur. He holds that Ktiva is more strong even than Hirhur. Those who say this is more important than Hirhur because you're doing an action, you're doing a maase. And therefore, even according to those that Hirhur love Kedibur Dami. Hirhur is not like Dibur, and therefore you're patur, you're absolved from saying Birkata Torah by just mere thinking of Torah. Here, over here, by, by Maase of writing, you would be Chayat. Yeshomrim de derech hakotev lehotzi tevot mi piv b'shat aktiva. There are those who say that the reason that you have to say Birkata Torah when you write is because sometimes you're not mindful, you slip up, and when you're writing, you come to say the words that you're writing, and therefore you have to be careful to say Birkata Torah because of the words that you go into other, um, you know, subconsciously. This is when you're writing Sfarim for yourself, when you're learning, you're writing your Chidushim, your thoughts, you're putting them on the, on, on the paper. But so fair that's just, um, you know, copying from another thing. So his brain could be completely shut down and he's just looking and, and copying basically from a source to a copy. Says the Mishnah Bura, in that case, you don't need to say bracha. This is not considered limud. You're not learning anything. Your mind is completely not on learning. You're just copying, you're an copy, old, old time copy machine, basically. And therefore, you're patur from saying, um, and certainly, says the Mishnah Bura, if you are writing a letter, right, to your friend, and you're making like a silsul, you're making a poetic thing, play on a, on a thing, and you throw in a pasuk over there, you don't mean anything for learning. That's not considered learning. You're just saying it, to use it as a mashal, as an example, to, to, to just be poetic, you're using a pasuk. Therefore, you don't have to say, Birgata Torah before you write that. Um, you don't need to say bracha, because your kavana is not to learn Torah. What's the maskana? You do not rely on, on Maran Shukharuch, says the Mishnah Bura. Says you shouldn't just say bracha on hirhur and writing. Says so if you're saying you should say bracha for sure, but once you say bracha, don't just quietly start writing after you said the bracha. You should say some of the learning out loud or say some psukim. Which is our minhag already to say, right? As soon as we finish Birkat of Torah, what do we say? This way, you saved yourself. You know for sure you learned something. You said some psukim right afterwards, and there, there are people who say some some gemarot as well afterwards. And this way, you know for sure that you have covered all your bases, right? To say it out a little bit to make sure that it's not going to be. A bracha lebatala. What you're going to be saying, right? Yes. Not if he said. He said if in the morning he has already said birkat the Torah. No, but if he wakes up, you know, early, you know, after midnight, he wakes up already and he wants to do, then yes, then he could, uh, he should say birkat the Torah before he starts writing, uh, writing sifre Torah. That's correct, yeah. One bracha a day, sufficient, right? Says the Mishnah Bura, im eno omer psuke brikat kwanim o braita, te elu tevarim achara bracha kemoshe noagin. If you say the brikat kwanim and the braitot that people say after brikat Torah, that already covers all your bases. You don't need to say, um, to, to say what you're reading out loud. Now, 
And this that we said, that this shita holds, I mean, Maran, who says you have to say bracha for writing, holds that writing is more important than hirhur, than just thinking in the Torah. You have an explanation uh, that Chachamubadia brings that when you say the Misfah of Talmud Torah, it has, it has been said, Shemikach Shemitzvah Talmud Torah, he writes, the mitzvah of Talmud Torah is mm -hmm. you have to teach it to other people. It's not sufficient to just learn it, but you have to teach it as well. Right? All of that, right? Therefore, yesh l'moch ikar kiyuma mitzvah hu bedibur the ikar of the mitzvah is by saying it or by writing it that you're avail availing it, making it available for other people to learn. Will not be hirhu, and not with hirhu. You're already sitting there doing it for yourself. But when you write, it's for other people as well. It's part and parcel of teaching it to other people. Says That's why hirhu is le less significant than ktiva. Ktiva is more important, and according to Maran, you would have to say bracha. On, um, on writing as well, right? Now the Kafchaim writes that the Sofer, that's Ma'atik, is just copying from one Sefer to another, and his mind is bichlal, not following what's happening in the writing, that he does not need to say Torah. So says the Kafchaim, Says the simple understanding of Shukaruch is anyone that's writing to the Torah has to say because of Torah. And according to those who say Ktiva is a, an action, is a maase, and therefore is considered like Dibur, considered like talking in the Torah. Says the Kavachayim, there would be no difference between writing for learning or writing not for learning. And therefore, to come out of Safek, you should say Birkat Torah, but then learn a little Torah, say a little bit of the Psukim of, of uh, Birkat Kohanim, the Brayta that they say. And therefore, you, this way you will be uh, covering all your bases. So basically, what comes out of the is if you want to write Chidushe Torah, one morning you wake up. Right, and you you remember the drasha of the rabbi yesterday. He said, "Ah, I want to write this down." Right, you have to be careful to say the Torah, but then don't just write. Say, "Okay, fine, I'm learning Torah now, so I don't need to say Birkat Kohanim." No, say Birkat Kohanim, say some brightas, learn something out loud, and then you can sit and be a scribe, right, to 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 write the Divret Torah that you heard. One more say if that's. Same thing, typing is considered that as well. Yeah, even though the typing in digital uh, day and age is very, very questionable if it's considered uh, writing, but nevertheless, when you're, your mind, especially if you're understanding what you're writing, you're not just copying and you're being meharer, a person should say Birkata Torah even before typing Kriduche Torah. Then you're saying it. Then for sure you have to say without it. The whole the whole question about ktiva is that you're not saying it, you're just writing. That's why it's questionable. Otherwise, if you're actually saying the different Torah, for sure you have to say without Torah according to everyone. We are the time as Hashem will continue this in the days to come.